This is Tierra. Tierra's in for a big change today. We're gonna go from this kind of grown out lob to a more kind of uh, pixie haircut. So we got our shampooed and then we just kind of pre-sectioned off the top from the bottom. So just a long section that works on the front hairline across the parietal down into uh, kind of the lower crown, same on the opposite side. They are slightly asymmetric uh, just based upon her natural growth pattern. So working right in the front, gonna create a graduated line. So just taking a vertical section, bringing the hair straight out from the head keeping my fingers angled in towards the bottom. Section two uses section one as a guide, but is not over-directed forward. Just brought straight out from the head and using section one as the guideline. As we work around into section three, same thing. Just pulling straight out from the head, using the previous as a guide, cutting a graduated line longer on top, shorter on the bottom. kind of work around behind the ear. So now we'll start getting into the nape. So as we go down through the bottom, it gets even shorter and tighter into the head shape. Uh, we chose this look for Tierra because she has a really strong kind of face shape. And I thought that getting some of the hair off of it would open that up a bit and create something that was really suitable and flattering for her, but also very striking. So it's all about consistency here. So consistent dampness, uh, consistent body position, and consistent section sizing. So I'm not really over directing the hair forward, just pulling it straight out from where it lives, using the previous section as a guide, getting shorter as I work into the nape. The more we work around, the kind of easier it is to get lost just because there's so many curves in the head. When you work on the side, it's pretty easy because it's flat. When you get to the back, it curves behind the ear, then it curves again at the occipital bone. So really just maintaining this consistency is what's super important. So opposite side, going to do the exact same thing. You can see the graduated line shorter in the bottom, getting a little bit longer as we work up to the top of the section. Just bringing everything straight out from the head. No over direction. So section two uses section one as a guide. I'm just following that guideline all the way up. As we work around and behind the ear, you can see it's starting to get longer on the top, shorter through the bottom. Really just about maintaining consistency. And we worked a little bit past center back on the other side. So as we come across, we'll have something to kind of check our work against. So just straight out from the head. No over direction. And the cutting line is short to long. Just connecting through to the opposite side there. And if I did a good job, then the connection point should be right through the middle of the, of the hair. Looks pretty solid, last little bit, just connecting side one to side two. Now working into the top, took a long kind of section that went from the crown up to the high point of the head, just a vertical section, uh, elevating using some of the uh, graduation from the underneath as a guide and creating a layer. Over directing everything into section one at this point on a bit of a pivoting section. 
So that'll just help maintain the fluidity of the haircut through the top here. And just help it really hug into the head shape. On um, the opposite side, body position stays the same, pushing into my guide now, but over directing everything from the left into the first section. You can really see the over direction there. So top bit gets a little bit longer. Now just extending that section through to the front and using the longest point of that layer as the guide to connect into the front part. Some of her fringe will fall out. And now just bringing everything up to the same point. So section two goes straight up using section one as a guide. Section three and four will do the same thing. What you're left with is this kind of length around the front. Same thing on the opposite side, using the middle section as a guide. Two, three, and four go straight up in the air using the previous section as a guide for the cutting line. Just kind of checking the balance, checking the shape, seeing how the hair from the left would look if it moves over to the right side and vice versa. It's kind of your finished wet shape. It's going to go through with a little bit of a wrapping technique. Really just want to control the hair, put a nice shine and polish on it and get it to lay in its natural falling position. So not lifting or leafing or anything like that, just using the heat from the blow dryer and the shape of the head to help with that kind of contour. As it dries, you get a kind of glimpse of what it's gonna look like with her previous color, which I thought was something that was pretty cool that we were able to kind of utilize what she already had and kind of create something completely different. So just examining the shape, kind of looking at it, moving the hair around. Here we go through the top now. Just elevating and going through with a point cutting technique and just creating a little bit of space through those cutting lines. Not really going, not really going to town on it, just enough to kind of give it some pieciness. Finding those heavy spots and just kind of pointing into them. As you can see through the top, there's a really defined line where we cut that layer and just kind of going through and piecing that out a bit all the way up into the fringe line just softening that out a little at a time just wanted to create like a stronger perimeter shape so just combing the hair down to its natural fall kind of working a small little line in around both ears just something to bring attention to the cheekbones and kind of direct at the corner of the eye. Not really anything too strong. When she moves it around, it'll kind of disappear and diffuse. Uh, into the back, wanted to create like a more graphic shape. So just coming in with the tips of the scissor, creating a nice outline, using the scissor to kind of clean up some of that neck hair. Same thing on the opposite side. Wanted something that was really strong, but still feminine, still soft. Uh, pulling the fringe across to both sides. So what we get is this little peak of weight through the center. So that way she can wear the hair either direction. And then here's me spraying with some texture spray. Just to give it a little bit of life, let some of the layers kind of pop up, moving the hair around, seeing if I like the way that it looks. Seeing if there's any spots where the hair is going to fall that I'm not really too happy with it. But as I go through and kind of move it around, I really like the way that it looks on her face shape. I like the options that it gives her to be able to push it to one side or push it to the other side or wear it straight down. And then here's your finished look. Hope you guys like it.